you'll see, can you see I'm starting to, <laughs> get, starting to get brave? Yeah. But that's fine, you know, I think um, a, a customer of this sort of car would be extremely disappointed if they wanted to give it a bit of a tickle and didn't have the energy oh, to do it. Oh, bit of understeer. Yeah, that one was yeah. expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back on the road, back on the road. Back on the road. Okay. Hey guys and welcome to Petroped and welcome to very rural Wales and my mate Will. <laughs> welcome to the channel my friend. Thank you very much. Now, if you were very observant and watched series one of Vintage Voltage. It was, wasn't it? You, series one, episode one. Episode one, you will remember this chat because Will and I met when Will worked with Moggy at Electric Classic Cars and we've kept in touch ever since mm -hmm. because um, well, lots of reasons. One, you love your mountain bikes. Yeah. But you're a car guy, and most yeah. importantly, you are a car designer and yeah. an engineer. Yes. And we've talked about a project that you've had going for a while, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically, <laughs> it sounds really, really, designing your own car. Yeah, so the, the reason I professionally do what I do now is because when I was a teenager, so I might as well tell the story right from the beginning, um, my dad used to work in Westbury as a lorry driver, yep. just up the road from the Marcus factory. And um, I used to go to work with him on a Saturday morning and walk down to the factory and go, oh, men in sheds build cars. Yeah. Not long after that, I got a job in historic motorsport, a um, little village down the road, a guy, uh, a guy and his dad, he was actually the Emerson sports car, it's kind of the origins of McLaren in a way. Um, so he was, I, I was working with him and learning the, the hands-on skills of welding, lathes, mills, um, going to scrapyards, pulling out some uprights from an old Alpha to stick in a 1950s whatever single seat racing car. Um, so I got a very hands-on background and then I went to uni to study motorsport engineering. And then um, once I graduated, so it's, 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 it's been this thing that's been with me all my professional career that I am going to build my own car one day and I'm going to make a successful business out of it. Yep. Fast forward to now, um, I now work designing vehicles mainly in the renewable energy sector. So I've been lead, lead design engineer for hydrogen cars, battery cars, vans, motorbikes, now some flying machines. Um, so that's where I'm at now. But the, the car for me, the, the business that I want to start, um, it's, it's, it's never been more relevant and um, I feel the world needs it. So talk to us about why I'm here. Well, you're here because you're a mate and you want to have a couple of beers. And <laughs> we are and... drinking beer, actually. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers. Um, This is, I've just, um, yeah, we'll be doing some driving in this video, but we're doing driving in complete virtual reality. And you'll have seen that at the beginning of the video. But let's, let's kind of, there's a big story to tell before we get to me driving your car mm -hmm. around a Caribbean island, which is a lot of fun. And binning it. Uh, I Quite got, spectacular. Yeah, I know, but you know, I got a little bit enthusiastic. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if, if I had a pound for every time I'd binned it, I wouldn't need investment now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you do need investment. And that's yeah. kind of one of the things we're, we just want to kind of tell your story. We've been mm -hmm. talking about sharing this story for a long time. Mm. And, and it's been a case of not being ready or whatever. Now it's almost you're ready and you're running out of time. And you've also got a test bed or a, a, a showcase, the VR that we're going to have a look at very shortly, yep. that kind of helps people see what you've been doing. Exactly. It makes it, um, it's very difficult to get investment to build a car when you haven't got a prototype. And yep. building a prototype takes a lot of money. Yeah. I, I say a lot of money. For, for a major manufacturer to do it, it would cost 10 times what we need to do it. But yeah, so the, the design, um, it's going to be an amazing driver's car. And it's going to be the USP of the company basically is we've designed a car and we've hit upon this lovely powertrain that creates an architecture that means we can cater for every alternative to fossil fuels. So we want to be the company that can stand back and say, you know what, we don't care as a customer what you want. We've got a solution for you know, different regions, different markets, different infrastructures. They're all going to have this different requirement for what powertrain they need. Battery electrics won't suit everybody. Hydrogen electrics aren't quite there. You know, so so the the turbulence over the next ten years is 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 a biggie, and we think we can cater to helping the world through that turbulence, mm. as well as providing a driver's car, you know, twelve hundred kilos, four hundred and fifty brake, all-wheel drive, high revving, high um, ten thousand rpm. 
<laughs> 10,000. Well, it's, it's a tiny little rotary engine out of a, out of a racing motorbike. So um, I think, as we, as we talked about earlier, when you're a driving enthusiast, you communicate with your car and you tell your car what it is you want it to do and how it communicates with you through an engine and a gearbox. Yeah. We're not saying that we're always, you know, we are going to evolve to become a battery electric manufacturer. We are going to evolve to be a hydrogen electric manufacturer. But understanding the ethos that a driver needs currently from engaging with a car and engine it's a really important thing to us and we want to carry that spirit forward into this future technology yeah so where where are we then with, with so I, I i you've shown me pictures of of the design a number of times and it's mm -hmm. there's a few things it's a very beautiful car thank you it's it's a nice small compact driver's car one of the things i always say when people say what kind of cars do you like best on your channel always drivers cars it's yep. that visceral engaging car that almost becomes part of you mm -hmm. but the other bit i love about it is um and i've talked about this quite a lot on the channel in fact i talked about it on the podcast very recently is is the alternative fuels thing mm -hmm. i am convinced that going all electric and all electric only which we are hell-bent on doing not just in the uk but seemingly across europe i'm just not sure that's the right thing i think there's space in there for programs like Porsche with their synthetic fuels, there's space yep. in there for hydrogen, yep. fuel cell and hydrogen combustion. So when you talk to a car designer like you that's designed a platform that can run on synthetic fuels, hydrogen combustion, hydrogen fuel cell, who are, no, no, there's no one else doing that. No, I think that there are a couple of manufacturers that have realized it's relatively easy to shoehorn battery electric tech into ice tech. So um, a lot of I mean, Moggy, prime example, yep. um, he's doing great things, taking existing cars that had engines in, and he finds places to stick the batteries in the motors, yep. makes great cars out of it. If you look at a Mini Electric, that's pretty much all that Mini did, they've yep. got a crate motor, all the batteries go where the fuel tank was, exactly. and, and that's that, it's built on the same line, that's all yep. they've done really. The really difficult bit is transitioning then to hydrogen tech. Yeah. because the storage tank for hydrogen is fundamentally a different shape. Mm. There are companies out there that are making much more easily packaged hydrogen fuel tanks, but on the whole at the moment where we are is cylinders. And um, you know, one and a half kilos at 700 bar is probably a foot in diameter and three foot long, mm. minimum. You know, So that's, that's the tricky bit, is finding somewhere to stick the tank. Batteries are really good. So electric motors are really good at being smaller than an engine, and batteries are really good at kind of going wherever you want to put them. Yeah. So the battery world is relative. That, that's why we've hit on this, this really unique way of taking a, um, taking a hybrid and evolving it to a battery electric and evolving it to a hydrogen electric. We, we can bake all of those packaging requirements into the hybrid. Yeah. So uh, we, we've had pushback from some people saying, well, why the hell are you building a car now with an engine in it. So, well, we actually build a car now with an engine in it because it's still current, it's still valid, but it answers all the question for the future tech. It's, yeah. it's, 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 we're, we're designing the battery one really easily at the same time as designing the, the hybrid. Yeah. If we designed the battery one first, it would be quite difficult to go the other way. Yeah. I think the, the best place to look actually, I think is, um, so JCB are doing some amazing things. Um, so, you yeah, know, I agree, JCB, I, I think, you know, for, for plant and heavy, heavy vehicles i think hydrogen is just such an obvious choice yeah and i think the, the jcb journey was quite interesting because they obviously had their internal combustion diesel engines um they then started to realize that um you know all of the legislation around the ad blue the stuff that was being imposed on them to make their engines clean enough mm. was starting to become quite restrictive so then said well okay let's look at batteries oh hang on a digger needs to work for 12 hours a day every day seven days a week batteries ain't going to work right. and you need a lot of them so then said oh right, let's look at fuel cells fuel cell tech isn't quite there yet for, for, for many reasons um obviously people like toyota are making it work and and it is going to happen it's just uh, they weren't there yet so they said well let's mix the technologies and let's look at hydrogen combustion now, jcb has an extremely difficult but very predictable drive cycle so they're, 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 the difficult part is they need a lot of energy going through their diggers seven days a week, 12 hours a day. The easy bit is it's reliably that, and it's usually on one place and got to travel far. So, so for them, hydrogen combustion, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. It gets knocked because it's not quite as efficient as what fuel cells could be, but the technology is already there. Yeah. So um, if the technology is there, but it's not quite as efficient, you gain some of that efficiency back by the fact you're using the existing technology. Well, so that's, that's phrased wrong. You're not getting the 
you're not getting the efficiency back you're just making it more customer feasible yeah which is a big thing it's a massive thing cars are a little bit diff different because different drivers are going to have different needs you know, some people might buy a sports car and use it six days a week to get working some people might buy a sports car and have it sitting in the garage for six months yeah it, that's difficult um but not insurmountable yeah so where are you with the project then because um there's there's a couple of reasons for doing this video one it's a great excuse to come and stay at your house and have a beer and chat yeah. cars and mountain bikes but being serious you've been trying now for for three years to to get some yeah. some major funding on board let's talk numbers How, okay. in an ideal world mm -hmm. you're looking for interested parties to come on board and invest how, how much do you need? We need about 470,000 to build the one car. And that's on a, sh that's on a budget. We were looking for 1.6 million to build um, a hybrid demonstrator, a hybrid prototype, a battery electric prototype, and a hydrogen fuel cell demonstrator. So that'd be a static one, just showing how the package would work. So we were at 1.6 million. We had a company valuation of around 5.7. <laughs> We timed it really badly. We started. We, we started. <laughs> I don't know. So was this thing? Um, uh, oh, that, some, somebody got the. A lot of people got the flu, flu or yeah, yeah. something Can't like that. Mate, yeah. COVID. So, I remember um, that you were like, I can't believe this happened to me. Yeah. Right so now. so we were gearing up to get investment for a long time, and then you know, early 2020, I think it was, we said, all oh, right, now let's do something about it, and we'll look for it. Anyway, since then, it's just been a, a, a sequence of events that hasn't done us much good. Um, and, and it will happen. This car is going to, it is going to get out of our heads onto four wheels at some point. Yeah. Um, my co-founder, um, Nico, he's, uh, he's a, a genius for powertrains. And a lot of the powertrain stuff we're doing is, 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 you know, is because of him. So Nico and I are the constant in the company. We now do have a direction to build it. But unfortunately, it's not going to be the whole encompassing energy message with trying to create as part of the company yeah. it's going to be a little bit slower and a little bit more just focused on the hybrid car is key which for me is a little bit of a shame because i feel that the part of the mess the world is in is to do with um the the, the legislators the guys at the top telling us the engineers what we have to build for the market they don't really have enough information about all of these new technologies yeah and they don't have that information because quite a lot of the manufacturers are only really good at shouting about what they're doing. Yeah. You know, if you go to Tesla and say, I'd like you to put a fuel cell in this car, please, he's probably not going to do it. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so we, we feel that there's, there's something really powerful about us being completely technology agnostic. We're going to create the great car. The technology can be whatever the world needs to progress. And we can assess that like for like on a, on a level playing field that other people can't. Yeah. You, you can't stick a Tesla Model S next to a uh, Mirai and say which is better. No. Because they're just different. You know? yeah. If you could take one technology out of that and kind of start swapping and changing, you'd then have a much more important and, and more encompassing message to you're tell. Almost, you're almost designing a car that's kind of hedging, hedging your bets on what the future drivetrain technology is going to yeah. be. Because nobody really yeah. knows. Exactly. The, the only thing we know about the next 10 years is we don't know what the next 10 years are going to bring. Yeah. Supply chains, um, resources, and we, we chatted earlier, there's a yeah. lot of people that pick up on these, oh, but this isn't going to work because. Yeah. Actually picking those messages apart, it's really important. And there's a lot of people with a vested interest that are saying the wrong things. Yeah. And we feel that we can be in a position where we don't have to do that. We can yeah. be just completely open and honest and just do the one thing, which is provide a driver focused sports car to a customer and put a powertrain in it that is fossil fuel free and the best solution for them based on their whole life cycle analysis of owning that car for x amount of years yeah i think we should go and drive it don't you okay <laughs> so um we've got this lovely little caribbean island yes um you're gonna have a couple of minutes of driving through town just to get the feel for because you've got no g-force and it's yeah. quite a it's a budget rig. It's yeah. Budget. You okay. Know, you will have driven rigs where more people where people have spent more on just the steering wheel than the whole setup. I was on a sim yesterday. It was fifty thousand pounds for the okay. sim. Right. right. This <laughs> came in at about twelve hundred quid. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's worth saying we, we didn't we didn't set this thing up to drive. We set no. this thing up because the whole styling and the the development of the vehicle. The yeah, we, we we feel we're at a level virtually where some people. Um, some people go into production when they're not virtually where we are. Yeah. You know, we, we know exactly what it's going to look like. We've got the interior, we've got the powertrain. We don't want to actually make something physical till we've got the budget to get to the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. 
but um, but we're in a really good place. You're a bit like Haas F1 were when they first started because they did everything right. virtually, didn't they? They didn't they, they did sim and and stuff before they built the car. Mm -hmm. so How did on. they get on? They're doing all right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's go and let's go and drive the car, okay. and then we'll come back here and debrief. Mm -hmm. So, so what I sit want to in. Do, no, you, you 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 stick it on and look that way. Stick it on and look this way. Yeah. So what you should see, hopefully, is a Hilux. Ooh, whoa, yeah, okay. Um, and if you just take a walk towards the Hilux. Right. Just, just <laughs> oh have my a walk, God. just yeah. go and have a look around the Hilux. Yeah. That, yeah, that's very weird. <laughs> that, there's like a car a driving past. Yeah. There's a, that, that looks like a Nissan Leaf just driven past, by the way. It was a Leaf, yeah. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, GT4 RS, that's quite cool. <laughs> I put a couple of Porsches on there specifically because I know you're a bit of a thanks, Porsche fan. Thanks, thanks. So when you're right. ready, turn around. Oh, oh wow. So, See, this is the first time I've seen it since you showed me sketches yonks and yonks ago, and I'm sure it's changed loads since then. Is the door opening or closing? It, the door is open. Oh man, that's amazing. Virtual reality is weird, because I know in my head, oh, door's just closed. There we go. I know in my head I'm in your front drive. Yep. But I'm not, I'm in a parking lot on a little Caribbean island surrounded by cars. Yeah, surrounded by beautiful, that was lovely. Oh, there we go, yeah. All right, do you want to reach for the door? <laughs> That's just so wrong. Right, so now you're in a car on an island. Um, if you look at the sat-nav, yeah. the sat-nav works, but only if you're on the right side of the road, as in not the right Okay. Hand. That's that GT4S, he's going to so want to race, isn't he? You should find free pedals, you should find a gear stick. Wow. Go for a drive. Oh my God, hold on. So let me just, that's that one, that one. Oh yeah. So In you're gonna follow things on, out onto that road. Um, the first couple of minutes, you'll whoa, find you're whoa. in a town and you're in I'm like going 40 left or right? Left, that's it, follow that road. And then keep oh an eye on the sat nav, keep an eye on your whoa. gears and keep an eye on your speed. This, this is all about just getting used to how fast it feels. Oh wow, this is bizarre. The really cool thing is, because we're sat outside, yeah. I've got wind blowing in my hair. Exactly. So you can see the speedo in the middle of the dash. Yeah. This bit through the town, it's really important just to get a bit of a feel for that speed. You haven't got G-force, you know, so getting a feel for that's really important. Wow, oh, this feels very weird. So I'm currently in second. I'm just gonna... And because of this powertrain, although you have a little engine to play with, you have all the torque in the world. You could be just cruising along. So talk seat. to us about the powertrain while I'm driving along. So tiny little, um, extremely high performance rotary engine. So rotary engine, that's kind of the, a wankle engine, yes, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Like you would have found in an RX-7 or RX-8. Yep, but it's actually out of a motorbike, it's out of a racing motorbike. And we're working very closely with that manufacturer and it's an amazing little engine. But what we're tr striving for is an, you as a driver communicate with your car with the engine box. Yeah. You use the gears and you use the revs to decide what that car is doing. Yeah. That for us is the whole driving experience. So we've got a tiny little engine that you can communicate with, with a gearbox, but it's heavily electrified. Yeah. So a good analogy is like an electric guitar. If you play an electric guitar, not plugged in, you're still playing a guitar. You've still got that emotive experience. Yeah. But it's only when you use the electric electricery to amplify that that it then comes alive and makes a lot of noise. So you're in a all-wheel drive, 1,200 kilo sports car. You've got an electric front axle with about 100 horsepower. You've got uh, a 220 horsepower engine at the back with another 100 horsepower of electric on top. And we'll talk a little bit later about the uh, the way those torque curves overlay. And it's, there's a magic thing that happens when you use a very high revving, high performance engine married to an electric powertrain. And that's what this car's all about. But the major thing this car's all about is moving away from fossil fuels. So you could be doing this now and you could be in uh, something being run on hydrogen or ethanol. Ooh. Oh, I'm coming out, I'm gonna have to overtake something now. Yeah, so you're coming up behind something. Uh, you're also coming up to the junction. Um, so this is quite key to look at the sat nav now. Um, oh, I'm gonna turn right. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's weird. And then you're coming up some other traffic lights where you're going to go left. Oh yeah, yeah. And then the interior, so yeah. the, oh, this just, it's very cool. We want to go for simple. 
Um, we think the entertainment of the future is all going to be about people using their own phone. So you'll yep. see the, the sat nav there is a phone. And other than that, it's extremely simple. Yeah. You know, we, we, uh, oh, yeah, it is a phone, yeah. <laughs> I know it's me saying that's. I'm going to overtake this dude because he's in the Porsche. That's fine. They're all kind of doing road speeds and you're doing. 44. 44 you know? in the middle of a town. Oh, after well. a beer as well. I'm, I've had a beer and I'm a, <laughs> and I'm a advanced driver. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about this. You know, if, if you decided for whatever reason to pile into the back of that truck, we'd just restart you. So, <laughs> so the, the fuel that the rotary engine's running on. Yeah. When we launch the vehicle, it will be running on petrol. Yeah. So fossil fuels are here at the moment, but because we've got such a balance of um, internal combustion and electricery, we feel that what we can essentially do is amplify what the engine is doing, and we're expecting, we haven't got any numbers on this yet, but we're expecting a very high miles per gallon from a very high performance car. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd be disappointed if we didn't see on a normal drive cycle up to uh, approaching 100 miles per gallon. Wow. Because if you think about it, if you're, if you're doing a 20 mile trip and you've got 100 miles of range in your battery, why would you use much fuel? Now that's another one, right, in front? That is, yes. Oh, we're going to have to have a race now, aren't we? Well, he's traffic, so he won't be going very fast. But if, oh. you, if, you, if, you, if you want to overtake him and have a look at what he's doing, yeah. Uh, another thing I would say is look out for the road signs. All of the road signs that say bend, yeah. mean it. They mean it. They mean a really good bend. And there's it'll probably be, a cliff. It'll be a third or second, basically. <laughs> it's just a surreal experience. Yeah. So, I haven't actually looked behind me in, in the back of the car yet. Oh, the seats are cool. Yeah, so um, it will be a fixed seat and movable pedal box and steering. Okay. Simply, simply because that's lighter. Yeah. Um, the, the seats are essentially a trimmed bulkhead. So lightweight, uh, have you told me the weight of the car already? Uh, 1,200 kilos. Wow. We're picking up a bit of pace now. Oh man, this is amazing. It's quite immersive, isn't it? And the view to the left at the moment is quite nice too. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. So follow this little dirt track and you'll end up on a beach. Obviously. Oh wow. Okay. And if you leave in gear it will turn the engine off. Okay. Yep. Is that in gear? Oh yep. wanna lift the there we go. Alright, so I'll uh, open the door for you. Thank you. Just so wrong. Oh my god. Okay. So yeah, you don't have to worry about the. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Right, so. But you can crouch down, you can have a look at the suspension, you can wow. probably get to know it. It's a pretty rear, isn't it? Yeah. So we, we've, um, we've been working with a very talented designer called Sam Reese. Um, we lucked out finding him as a graduate and he's really, really, he's been really key to making this shape work. Yeah. So it wouldn't have happened without him. Can I go around the front? Is that you can right? go wherever you want. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> I'm on a beach, look. Wow. <laughs> the wind's in your hair and... The great thing about this modern technology, right, is, is it's so immersive to be able to kind of see I mean, the, the sculpting, there's a lot of aero going on on the front. Is that a, like a little beam wing across the front? Yeah, no. it is. So that, that's um, something that's been key to the style for a long time. Um, Through body aerodynamics is going to be, uh, or, or in oh, some wow. cars it already is. You can see that through on the inside of the rear wheel. Yeah. It's almost like a very Valkyrie-esque. Yeah, so the key thing we want to do is make a car that from a distance doesn't look like it's too bonkers. Yeah. But when you get up close, you start to notice the features like that. So, so from a distance, it looks like a, let's say, Lotus-y kind of, it's about the same footprint as a Lotus. Um, uh, oh, so that's, that's the key thing. Beam wing there. Yeah. You can get, get in and around it as much as you want. That is a mar remarkable, isn't it? I'm sure from the outside, I look like a complete twonk, but. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will have, 
a boot. Oh wow, it's not opening quite as much on this as we will have it opening, but... Um, it's such a dinky little thing. What's the kind of yeah. equivalent car size? Well, it's um, be like an Elise coincidentally, kind it's of about size? the same as my Z4. Really? Yeah. Oh wow, okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, Evora with slightly shorter overhangs. As if by magic we're back here in your outdoor kitchen. <laughs> that was unreal. Mm -hmm. I think that that is not about the sim it's about the virtual reality experience yeah and the main reason i invited you here just to be clear it wasn't about a sales pitch or anything i'm slightly blown away by what we've been able to do with this yeah and i really wanted you to experience that because yeah. the the that, that that program that you've been driving this is kind of an open source racing sim and so many privateers out there around the world have developed little add-ons yeah. And every one of them has made it a little bit better. So it's kind of a sum of all those parts. It's stunning, really, what you can do in, in software and mm. open source as well. That mm. would have been, 10 years ago, that would have been millions and millions and millions of pounds. Um, for people like us, though, where this technology's got to where it is, it's, it's fantastic because we can do things on such a budget yeah. and give the immersion that you've just experienced. Oh, it's, it's unreal. Yeah. It's mind-blowingly unreal, actually. And mm. you, you very rapidly, and it's... The challenge I've got with making this video is it's very difficult to get on camera for someone sat at home just how immersive that was. Mm -hmm. But you, I think what the, the transition in and out of the car is a bit weird because you, you're, you're kind of in the virtual world, but you've also got to be aware of the physical world, like where mm -hmm. the seat is and stuff yep. and where the steering wheel is. Once your touch points are there, you are in that car mm -hmm. driving around the Caribbean island. Yep. And, and it, it's, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool. So... Um, I'm going to put all your details in the in the description below your email yep. address. If you're watching this, and for me there's an opportunity, and clearly it's quite a small number of people who might sit within this, um, you know. Well, it's probably worth know. saying we want a particular type of person. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't want to be. I'm not going to be too exclusive. But what we really want is people that get the vision of a fossil fuel free future without losing any of the fun. Yeah, we we need people to 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 engage. So, um, a good friend of mine ages ago explained sustainability to me in a way that really made sense. And that's sustainability is all about changing our behaviour today, so that we save the things we really enjoy about the world for the people of the future. Mm -hmm. The way we're carrying on at the moment, where we're using a lot of fossil fuels, and all of the drivers' cars are fossil fuel based, and we're looking at a future that, uh, you know, the cars are good, but they're a little bit so. We're going in a direction of of driverless cars and they're a little bit soulless and and okay we could in theory electrify all of the old classics to retain some of that mm. but actually it should be a new car design as well so yeah. sustainability is all about just changing the way we think so we, we want a sustainable mindset investor but what i really want out of all of this is to get people that enjoy driving are good at it and we can use them as a a, a set of people to develop the prototype car around yeah and if we can get 20 30 people on board that are real true driving enthusiasts and they want to take what is fun about driving today and carry that forward into the next well it's sustainable so forever yeah we shouldn't have to throw away the pleasure of driving just because we can't use fossil fuels anymore yeah. there's no point no, i agree absolutely agree so i'll put your email address get in Thank touch um and you know if, if 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 either you are that person or you know someone who might be that person mm -hmm. You know, to, to get involved in such an exciting project uh, with a huge potential for that kind of investment, I think that's yep. that's a big opportunity for somebody. Anyway, mate, I think we should um, finish these beers and well, enjoy the, the sunset. there is going to get lit. We've got, some, uh, we've got some lamb fish and stuff to throw at it. Um, and the weather's lovely. So it is not? lovely. It's, it's funny, it's been a nightmare filming because you can see that just it's so sunny, but it's beautiful. But, mate... Thank you very much. Yeah, hope you enjoyed that. That's a video with a difference. Yep. Well worth the trip out to Wales. Good. But if you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I'll put all of Will's details in the description below. Drop him an email and get involved because it's quite something. So, cheers. Raise a glass to it, mate. Happy Wednesday. That'll do. <laughs> cheers. <laughs>